Hello everyone and welcome to video number five in our series addressing conveyor drive problems. Today's topic is belt slippage and belt bounce. Today's April 13th. Video number 205 is sponsored by Romeca Corporation. We're a major supplier of motorized pulleys for the U.S. materials handling market and I'm your host Mike Golinski. We're part of the International Romeca Group we're a major supplier of rollers, motorized pulleys, pulleys and components for the global materials handling market. We're headquartered in Bergamo, Italy, with affiliates in nearly two dozen countries. Effective March 30th, we were designated as essential during the COVID-19 response. Therefore, production and repair of motorized pulleys has continued unhindered. However, all of our administrative and sales people are working from their homes, including myself today. We've prepared this video for anyone working from home who is interested in belt conveyor operations and design. And I draw your attention that we now have launched the free online consulting and training service. This service is available in a variety of formats, as you can see, short, medium, and long. Uh, we will be addressing in those uh, online sessions the topics that are covered in these six short videos. Our 10 to 20 minute online discussions will connect you with an engineer who could uh, work with you uh, hand in hand to address whatever conveyor problem you're handling. Our 30 to 40 minute classes will address one of the six standard conveyor drive topics. And uh, sad to say, we have canceled all of our seminars for 2020 because of the virus and we've replaced them with multiple webinars. And these will consist of one hour per day sessions over an extended period of time. Video 205, what's our agenda? How to solve conveyor belt slippage and or conveyor belt bouncing problems. As in all of our other videos, we recommend you identify your technical problem with your drive, request technical assistance, consider a technical solution, and then obtain and consider the commercial offer. Of course, it's important that uh, we as uh, providers of the service would have identified for us whether or not you have a new project or you're converting an, ex an existing system. Uh, with the topic at hand, it's most likely that you would be considering some sort of an upgrade or a conversion to an existing system on the topic of slippage and bouncing. What are some of the reasons for belt slippage? Uh, it could be driving from the tail position. Sometimes that's essential and uh, can't be avoided. And whether it be on a reversing or a non-reversing belt, slippage can occur when a driven pulley is in the tail. It can be from an articulated conveyor. When it opens up, it can release tension. And if the take up is not working correctly, uh, a decrease in slack side tension could occur. I'll define slack side tension in just a minute. It could be the age of a conveyor belt. It has stretched, maintenance has not been able to get after it because uh, maybe you're faced with a mechanical take up, uh, reduced staff has uh, prohibited uh, that uh, belt from getting the maintenance that it needs, or there's no convenient personal access to the mechanical take up, or it's in a restricted um, location of some sort. Or slippage can occur from harsh operating conditions, whether it be cold weather, or rainy weather or icy weather, that sort of a thing. And the, the primary reason for belt bouncing would be that of a vertical curve. Sometimes it happens that on a vertical curve type of conveyor, when it starts up empty, the empty belt will jump out, out of the trough. How do we address that? We'll come to that in a minute. Well, uh, in communicating with us, we recommend you download and fill in one of our app sheets explaining uh, the nature of your problem. And now I'd like to define slack side tension. Slack side tension, also called T2, is that tension that is required to prevent pulley slippage on the belt. Another reason for calculating T2 is to prevent belt sag. Both of those T2s need to be calculated we're addressing the T2 required to prevent slippage in this talk. And T2, by the way, is a function of the angle of wrap. This video is going to be contrasting 
exposed conveyor drive systems with internally powered conveyor drive systems. You can see on the left, an exposed drive system consisting of an external motor, gearbox, and sprocket and chain. On the right, you'll see a motorized pulley. And I draw to your attention the fact that it has been installed in a standard mechanical take-up. Now, here's an example of how the cell belt slippage when uh, the existing system has 180 degrees of belt wrap. This 30-year-old radial stacker had a 100 horsepower drive in the tail and slipped in the rain because the mineral is like a detergent. When it gets wet, when it gets wet, it makes everything quite slippy, slippery. And the solution was to install another 180 degrees of belt wrap in the head position. In this case, it happened to be a 60 horsepower, 24 inch diameter motorized pulley. Uh, providing 360 degrees of belt wrap enabled this radial stacker to, slop, to stop slipping. Here's another example. However, uh, the slippage was occurring uh, in spite of the fact that the drive was at the head. The solution to the problem was adding another 180 degrees of belt wrap, in this case, the addition of the drive was in the tail. A three horsepower, uh, 88 inch diameter motorized pulley was installed in the mechanical tank. -up. Here's an example in which uh, for 30 years, a dock conveyor had been driven with two drives, one at the north end, one at the south end. It was converted a few years ago to internally powered drives but in certain winter conditions, when frost would build up on the bottom of the carrying strand, the belt would slip. And so therefore the problem was not to install two drives because the system already had two drives, but the trick was to, act, to activate both of them simultaneously. So now both drives are energized, whether the product is moving north or south. So therefore 360 degrees of belt wrap, solve the wintertime slippage conditions. Now we turn our attention to belt bounce. You see before you a limestone storage facility at a cement plant in which material was carried from a tunnel conveyor up a vertical curve and discharged into a transfer tower. The problem was that when the belt started empty, the empty belt would jump up in the vertical curve off of the troughing idler, sometimes damage the belt, sometimes damage the damage the feeder structure system. The conversion was uh, going from a head drive to a head and tail drive. You can see the head pictured on the right, tail pictured on the left. Uh, when these were installed, the belt bounce problem was completely eliminated. Now starting up empty, the belt does not bounce off the trough at all. When it was originally proposed, there was some concern about putting the tail drive down in the tunnel because it was subject to flooding. However, this picture shows that the uh, tail pulley, having sustained uh, three floods, uh, sustained no damage. And on the right, you can see one of the feeders that uh, it has now been protected because of the elimination of the bouncing. Why are some of these things possible? Well, with an internally powered drive, it's simple to install it into a mechanical take up because anywhere a pillow block bearing can be mounted, a mounting bracket for a motorized pulley can be mounted. You see the shafts pictured there. Also, the center of mass is near the conveyor center line. The only really tricky thing to keep in mind when installing a motorized pulley into a screw take up is to make sure to festoon the power cord as needed. You see both a, a diagram there in the middle and an actual photograph on the right. And of course, as you probably already know, internally powered drives are hermetically sealed, internally powered, and self-lubricating. As you request technical assistance from Omeka Corporation, we would respond with something like this. This is a screenshot from a power calculation that we would do to ensure that um, your power is uh, exactly what you require. And this is an example of a tension check. This particular customer had dual drives. And uh, the idea was, since I have now put two drives in and I have more power than I did previously, can I handle a higher tonnage rate? And so we were challenged with uh, 
doing an analysis here, and this is just an example of what we did to make sure the customer was aware of when it was necessary to add additional counterweight so as to provide enough slack side tension to prevent slippage. Once you've uh, evaluated the alternatives, if you are interested in considering an internally powered drive, our offer would look like this with a specification, part number, price, delivery promise, and so forth. And that concludes our quick video on belt slippage and belt bouncing. Thank you for paying attention to it. And I draw to your attention that our online consulting is available for you. And all you need to do is reach out to us, reach out to us either by email or by phone. Uh, please remember that we have a how-to video tutorial library available on our website and our YouTube channel. And our growing list of work from home videos are stored there as well for your convenience along with our webinars. You can find it at romecacorp.com or you can find it on our YouTube channel. And I thank you for spending time with us today. I encourage you to reach out to us at sales-us at romeca.com or call us at the telephone number that you can, be, that you can see pictured right there. Uh, thanks again for paying attention to this video and uh, would encourage you to keep your chin up as we're trying to do as we endure this this virus. Thank you.